Hi everyone and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'll be showing you all the steps I use to prep a miniature before it's painted. The miniature I'll be demonstrating on is the Screaming Antelope from Kingdom Death Monster, and the first step is to wash your miniatures. Now this is actually a plastic miniature, which means it's not essential that you wash it. However, if you're working with either resin or metal miniatures, you should definitely wash them to remove any residue from their casting molds. With resin or plastic, I just use warm soapy water and a toothbrush, followed by a rinse under the tap. For metal, you could use the same, but I've heard other people have used both soapy water and or rubbing alcohol to clean them. If your miniature comes attached to a sprue like this one, you'll definitely want to invest in a small pair of wire cutters. Cutting the miniature from the sprue prevents any unnecessary bending or twisting of the miniature or its parts, which can definitely damage it. You don't have to cut particularly close to the miniature this time, I do that later. My goal is just to remove the miniature from the sprue without any damage. Once you have all your pieces removed, it's time to cut off all the excess bits of sprue and any flash and mold lines that you find. First I use the cutters to cut the sprue off as close as I can to the miniature, then I use a hobby knife to slowly whittle away any extra material. Sometimes you'll find a bit of extra material that shouldn't be there, and you can just use the hobby knife for that too. Next you want to remove the mold lines. Some people use the edge of their hobby knife to scrape at the mold lines, but unless it's a flat surface, you're better off using a file. You can get really small files at craft and hobby shops. I bought mine for a couple of bucks at Michael's. Now that you have all your pieces cleaned up, the next step in preparing your miniatures is assembly and gluing. First, you should always dry fit your pieces together and decide what order you want to assemble it in. This is the time you should also decide which pieces should be attached after priming or painting. There are two main types of glue that I use with plastic miniatures, super glue and plastic glue. If you know for sure your miniature is plastic and you're sticking one plastic surface to another, then plastic glue is your best choice. If you're in doubt or you have a resin or metal miniature, you should use super glue. If, however, you're working on a large metal miniature, then you may wish to go with something more heavy-duty like JB Weld. One of the great things about plastic glue is how fast it dries and how little you need to use. Just hold your pieces together for about 30 seconds and the bond should be strong enough that you can set it down. The next step for our miniature is to fill the gaps. For really small gaps, I sometimes just use a bit of extra glue on the surface, squeeze the pieces together and let them fuse. Then I go over with a file. Your best bet, however, is to use a crack fill putty. There's a lot of different types of putty that you can use. Vallejo has a really good one that I've not been able to get my hands on yet, so I'll be using liquid green stuff. Regular green stuff does a better job, but where this gap is in a really awkward spot and there's so many ridges, I'll be using the liquid version. Basically you want to get some on your brush, smear it over the gap, and I find the best next step is to just smudge it over the gap with your finger. This way you can wipe away the excess and press the putty into the gap. If you can't get at it with your finger, then use a damp brush to wipe away the excess. There's always going to be some where you don't want it to go, however, so when it dries, I just use the tip of one of my files and scrape it away. Sometimes a miniature needs to be pinned. The first step for this is to start a small hole with your hobby knife. This will keep the drill from sliding around. Next, drill to the desired depth with your drill. I'm using the Citadel drill with the smallest bit that it comes with, which is the exact same width as a paperclip. This may look a bit complicated, but it's a very simple and fun process. I've got a hole drilled in each foot now, so next I'm going to cut off a small piece of paper clip for each hole. I'm going back to my wire cutters again, and I'm going to cut a much bigger piece than I actually need. This is also useful if you want to stick your miniature to a piece of cork and paint it before you pin it to the base. Now I'm just putting out a drop of super glue for my wire. Then I dip each piece in the glue and press one into each hole. Pinning is a great technique if you like making custom bases separate from the miniature, or for fragile miniatures like this antelope. 
Once your super glue is dried, you can estimate how much you'll need for the base and then trim off the extra with your wire cutters. The next step is attaching your miniature to the base itself, and to start off, you're going to need some white tack. There are two connection points on this miniature, so I'm going to break off two pieces of the white tack. I'm first deciding where I want the miniature situated, and then placing the white tack where I want the pins to connect. Then just take the miniature, press the pins down into the white tack, and mark the spots that you're going to drill. So here you can see two little dents in the tack. Using the drill, I'm going to get the hole started, but I'm not going to drill all the way through yet. Otherwise, I'll get tack all over the drill and into the hole. Just get a good start on the hole. Peel off the white tack and continue your drilling. I'm going to drill until I see the tip of the drill starting to make stress marks on the bottom of the base, and then I'll stop. So once again, I'm dry fitting the miniature before I glue it. I just want to make sure that it's seated properly before I add the super glue. It looks good, so the final step is just to add a drop of glue to the tip of each metal rod and press the miniature into the base. The pinning does make a huge difference. The antelope can stand up even without any glue. Once the glue is added, the strength of the bond is fantastic. That concludes this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section. And once again, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.